Thank you, Jay. Yep. All right, so I am gonna show you guys my little way I do frequency separation. This is a basic introduction to frequency separation. This is not a deep dive. I am not going into full details, but I will show you enough to make you dangerous and do this without having to go to the internet, download an action, put the action in your Photoshop, play with the action. This is gonna show you how to build your own frequency separation layers. And I will walk you through it. It's very simple. And hopefully I'll demystify a little bit of it for you. I think, um, anyway, I think you'll learn something from it. I hope you do. So here we go. This is a, a portrait I took of Melanie Edwards down at the at a Willard Continental Hotel, and she's a piano player. But what I love about this image is her beautiful smile. Uh, there's a couple of highlighted areas on her face. And there are some, I mean, she's pretty much got a flawless face, which is great, but there's a couple things I wanna fix before we go into frequency separation. So what I typically do um, is I zoom in on my face, obviously. I'm looking around to see if there's any kind of spots I wanna remove. There's a couple of small things I can see, like in her lips right here, there's some uh, lipstick that I wanna kind of get rid of. So I can either come in with a clone tool or a um, spot healing brush, which I like my spot healing brush a lot. Bring that down a little bit. Kind of go in here and and keep in mind um i'm using a mouse i don't use a pen i don't use a wacom pen or a wacom tablet i have one i've tried to use it i need to go back to try to use it because i think with this kind of work that we're going to show you it, it would be very beneficial but i'm going to do this all with a mouse and, and, and so you can do it too um just a couple of small spots and i'm just kind of going through and just getting out real quick um, as I'm going through her face, I'm seeing some discoloration here, which we're going to address in Photoshop or in, in the frequency separation part of this. Um, but she's really good. She's a cute lady. I like her. So, I mean, not a lot to do with this. Um, since Melanie is uh, kind of a little, you know, I'm not really concerned about these little uh, wrinkles around her eyes. We can soften them up a little bit when we get into the frequency separation part but I don't wanna get rid of them because I think that makes her who she is. Um, frequency separation for me is about cleaning up some things. It's not about making them look like a Barbie doll. It's not about making their skin super duper smooth. It's really about adjusting the colors and mixing them and then adding some texture over top of it. So with that said, now we got her, I'm in a good position to move on to what I wanna call my frequency separation stage. This is where we're gonna build two layers and create the separation itself. So what I do is I'm gonna move this out of the way. You guys are right in, my, right in the path of my stuff there. There we go. So uh, I'm gonna keep my background layer, but I'm gonna do Command J and I think it's Control J on the PC. We're gonna create a new layer on top. Um, and I am gonna, actually I'm gonna create two layers. So the first layer at the bottom here, you can call it anything you want, but I'm gonna call it color. Um, you can color tone because this is the layer I'm going to work on to smooth the skin. You can call it skin smoothing or whatever, but I'm just going to call it color. So I know that's what, what that is. Um, some people do call it color and tone. Some people will call it color and mixture. Some people will call it whatever. The layer above, I am going to call that texture because this is going to be a texture layer that we're going to create. Um, and the texture layer could also be, could be called details or something of that point. But I, just for my, just this purpose, I want you guys to know we have a color layer and a texture layer. So we're going to separate the color layer and the texture layer from each other and create this, create a frequency separation group. So by selecting both of them together with your uh, mouse, if you do command G or control G on your uh, keyboard, you're going to get a group. Um, I'm gonna name this group frequency separation. I'm just gonna call it FS for short. And we now can see that it's grouped together. So there's our texture and there's our color. Um, not to confuse everybody, hopefully, we're gonna come down and we are going to turn off this texture layer. The texture layer is gonna come into play, but I think for the next couple of minutes, I wanna just talk about the color and how we're gonna mix it and use it and if the texture layer is there, you're going to see it. But I think without the texture layer, it just becomes a little bit more apparent. You'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. 
So, uh, so we have a problem there, sorry. Um, so we're gonna get the color layer and here's what we're gonna do here. In the color layer, what I'm gonna create is a blur. Everybody loves the Gaussian blur. You guys are still in my way here, I gotta move you out of the way. Oh man, how do I, there we go. Got you all hidden now. Okay, so in the color layer, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click on my, my um, magnifying glass to make this 100%. So I can kind of see, oops, <clears throat> to see more of the details that I wanted to do. But I really wanna focus on Melanie's face. That's the only thing we're gonna focus on today is just her face. So with the color layer selected, I'm gonna go filter, Gaussian blur, or blur Gaussian blur. And there she is, isn't that beautiful? We have to obviously adjust the blur radius here. And what I want you to do is start with it at almost zero. So this is like the basic thing you wanna do. The, the key here is to blur the image enough to just, just to the point where you're starting to lose detail in her face. You don't wanna lose all the detail, just wanna lose some of it. So the things will come together. And the pro tip here is be at 100%. Um, you're sliding the blur over until you, you don't see it. So we're gonna move it over. So now we're getting a little bit there and I'm sort of comfortable at 2.4. Let's, let's go to three and see what happens. Eh, three looks a little too much for me. I'll just go back it down a little bit. Uh, just 2.5 is perfect. Let's leave it at 2.5, 2.5. Um, now here's my, Disclaimer for this, this little technique that I'm doing here, I think should be done on every image that you do because everybody's different. Every image is gonna be different. The textures are gonna be different. And if you get it to that point, then you're fine, but you might wanna adjust your blur radius for every picture that you do, especially if you're at hundred percent and different settings, different textures, different skin tones, things will change. So make sure that you, uh, you can adjust. I mean, if you build an action, like Jake can teach you how to build the action, you know, you might have to have a spot in the action where it stops and you can adjust the blur, that kind of thing. But I think it's important that you, you understand that every person, every picture, every portrait that you do is gonna be different. So just make sure you understand that. Um, so you dialed in, you found the sweet spot of your radius. You, that's, this is kind of where we're at. And you can tell if I turn her off, she is blurry, turn off. I don't know if you guys can see that on the screen, but she is a little blurry and we are going, I'm going to select the texture layer next. And with the select, with this, let me see here, make sure I'm doing the right thing. Okay, so I've got the color one, we're all blurred. I'm going to come back to the texture layer and select it. Um, I'm going to go up under your image menu and I'm going to apply an image. This is going to bring up my dialog box. And in here is, um, some information, obviously the source, the source is the file that's opened. The layer that you want to tell it to apply to is going to be the color layer or the one that you, the one you just blurred. And the blending mode needs to be subtract. And now I'm not sure this, I'm sure it matters, but I'm working in 16 bit. Some people do work in eight bit. I, you know, 16 bit I think is where you need to be for this particular setting. Um, the scale and the offset that you see here are two and 128. That's a number that I found works for me. You can play around with that number. You can change that number. If it works better for you differently, that's fine. But that's, this is the formula that I work with when I'm, when I'm working in the texture mode, the, the uh, subtractive mode. So I'm gonna say, okay. And now I've got a texture mode that looks kind of weird. And I've got this color mode below, which you can't see. Now, what I love about the texture mode is you can still see a little bit of her red lipstick. It doesn't take away everything, but you can see all of the details in here and it's gonna subtract from that bottom layer. The next trick that you want to do, when well, you're gonna see all these, this all, what you're seeing here is like all the fine details and a little bit of color tones, that's cool. So the last step to this little thing I want to do is still with the texture layer highlighted, I want to change the blend mode from normal to what is it? linear light. So now we're back to linear light and you're like, wow, nothing's changed. Well, it has really changed. You just can't see it because we're in a different blend mode. But the way to make sure that you did this correctly is to 
um, click the I next to the folder, next to the frequency separation folder. And if it doesn't change, you did it right. If it goes crazy and it's something different, then you didn't do this these two steps correctly. So that's kind of like how you set up this, the frequency separation, the two layers that we're gonna need. So now we're gonna go work in these layers. Let me take a look at my notes here. So we're gonna fix the color layer, but what I wanna do is kind of show you, um, I'm gonna duplicate the color layer. because I wanna work on a different layer. It's kind of like not working on your background layer. I just wanna create another color layer in case I mess up, I still have my original layer to go back to. Uh, that happens, right? We can all do that. So there's my copy. I'm just gonna call it, oh my God, color fix. Call it fix me. Now I'm gonna work on that. So with my texture layer turned off or my eyedropper turned off, so I'm back to the blur mode, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna grab a mixer brush. Now, in your mixer brush selection tool, let's go to the very top of our screen here. From left to right, we're gonna see you know, your brush, your brush size, this box tells me if the brush is gonna pick up paint or not pick up paint. It's called the load, it's the brush load. This is the button that turns the brush load on and off. It needs to be off. This needs to be transparent because you do not wanna pick up paint. You just wanna push paint around. You wanna push the pixels around. You wanna push and mush and squish. And that's how you do it. You don't want that. If that is turned on and it's a different color, you are going to be painting like maybe Sandra Pierce would paint. And that's not what we want in this technique. We want just that to be turned off. That needs to be transparent. Moving over, we're gonna to come to our brush. This is the wet. Wet means it's gonna, it's 20%, not opacity, it's the 20% of water on your brush that's gonna be pushing the brush and mixing the paint. This should be somewhere between 20 and 25, maybe 20 and 30. The load is about 30. I don't really change that too much. Um, I don't want to go above 30 on that. And then the mix is anywhere between 20 and 30. I find like 20, 25 to be a good sweet spot for that. And flow, I really don't mess with. But the wet and the mix, this is where those two need to be, I believe. So, and you can play with this as you want. And it's really up to you. This is how it works for me. And it's worked very well for me. So with all that said, um, I'm gonna start just clicking and dragging around the, the image. So what I'm looking at Melanie, I'm seeing some spots up here in her forehead that I wanna fix. So I'm gonna grab that brush. I'm gonna adjust my brush sizes. I'm working at 100% here. And I'm just gonna start smushing these colors together. And you can see that, I'm gonna turn this off for a second. If you see in this, in this section of her head, if I turn off this layer to see the below layer, you can see that we're starting to make some changes to it. So I'm going to continue just this and really kind of get rid of some of the, this, the I don't know, the highlights or the, oh, too much there. And if you had a, a Wacom tablet, this might be a little bit more, might be, you might have a better touch for it, better feel for it. But I'm going to just kind of work through her face Bring some highlights back on her nose here. Just push that up. Come underneath her eyes and get rid of, you know, formulate or not formulate, but blend the colors down here a little bit better, especially right here in the corner where you can see it's, I see a little purple. You might not see it on your screen, but on my screen, I see a little purple and dark in that corner. So I'm just gonna push some of the colors up in there to get rid of that. Maybe underneath here to kind of tone it down a little bit. Get rid of these little highlights on her cheek or at least diminish them a little bit. And we can, I mean, I don't want to really go too far, but I can really change the shape of her face if I wanted to in frequency separation, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to kind of come through and smooth it out a little bit, get us some highlights, fix your face up a little bit. I mean, this picture is great. It's not, it's not a lot of work to do here, which is good. Sometimes you can take a lot of time, a lot of, um, a lot of stroking and, and smoothing out of things in her or on her face. 
but just take your time and go through. Just make sure you're blending correctly. Kind of go with the curves of the face, like her cheekbones here. I'm kind of going back and forth. Underneath of her nose, I want to get under here a little bit. When she has beautiful smile lines, I love her lines, but I don't want to get rid of all that stuff. But I kind of want to come in here and just maybe make that a little darker, or a little lighter, and just you can bring out the lines a little bit. On the top of her chin, I want to get rid of some of this um, discoloration. So I'll make that a little bit. And then on the side of her face, I'm going to bring this down a little bit. Still not crazy about the top up here, so I'm going to blend this a little bit more. All right, so that's got a pretty good blend to it. So I'm going to. This is the before, or this is the after, and that's the before. So you can kind of see the changes are coming to it. We've smoothed it out, we've uh, kind of blown out some blemishes there. And now when I add the texture layer on top of it, it's really cool. You can see what we've done. But now the texture layer brings back those textures, those small highlighted textures that we have. And I kind of really like that. So, ta-da. That's it, man. That's my frequency separation. It's really simple. I mean, I think that there's a lot of things online that can be added uh, or looked at. And I, I found this online and I found it very simple to do. Um, I understood it. It made more sense to me. And you can still work this. You can work the face. You can go down to her neck. You can work other things. I'm just working on her face right now. And I don't know about you guys, but I think that's a pretty cool, pretty cool different version. I mean, that looks pretty good. That's the before, and that is the after. Pretty simple, pretty basic. That's your intro to frequency separation. Do I have any questions? <clears throat> Tough crowd. Danny, <laughs> are there any other areas that you use frequency separation on besides like retouching skin? Uh, that's a good question. Let me go right into this since you mentioned it. So let me go into this. Uh, yeah, the lips, I'll use it on the lips as well. I'll use it on dresses and folds and clothes. Um, if you've got a somebody with a wrinkled shirt, this method really works well. Um, I mean, I was surprised at how well I could get rid of wrinkles with frequency separation, but I can, you know, come in here and smush Melanie's lips a little bit, um, make them a little whiter, kind of come in with my brush, just really come in with the highlights and smush them. And then when I add the texture back to it, it, it does a lot. You can do a lot. Yeah. So lips, face, neck, body, folds, creases. Um, I don't necessarily use it on backgrounds, but you could probably use it on backgrounds. It's not just for the face. It is for, <clears throat> um, it's for dresses. Like I, I pull wrinkles out of wedding dresses this way. I pull wrinkles out of guys' shirts. I've done all different kinds of things, but this is, this is, Kind of what I like to do. I mean, it's very simple, very straightforward. But I love that's the before, and that's the after, and it just makes her look so much more cleaner and better. And the the skin, it's not so blotchy or so messed up. Or I mean, when you look at enough faces, you you'll start seeing discoloration, not necessarily freckles or or spots, or but you'll start seeing because the light hits it a different way. There might be a shadow. Or, anything like that, but it, it's a great way for you to protect <clears throat> or at least get you in the ballpark for, um, for the images. I mean, I, that's how I would start. Now there's a deeper dive that we can go into where we can start adding dodge and burning, um, more in depth on the color separation. We can get really deep into the skin, but this is just, I just wanted to give you guys, I wanna do frequency separation. Here's a few steps to get you started. <clears throat> Excuse me one second. Here's a few steps to get you started. And then you can work from there. I, I don't wanna, I mean, we can go into a deep dive at some other collaborative work day, but there's other ways to go into it. You know, working the eyes, working the eyelashes, doing all kinds of um, deeper things on, a, on almost on a 
minute macro level. You'll you'll get really close into the skin, and it's it's really working. You're really going in, and you're and you're talking probably magazine quality editing at that point. But for your basic stuff, your clients are not going to be disappointed in that. I mean, that looks pretty good compared to that. I think. Could be wrong. You guys can let me know. All right. That's Danny, it. Danny, to reiterate, you copied that layer and on your texture layer, you uh, went to apply image and then you changed yes. it. You on, on the, image. Yeah, on the texture layer. So I go to texture, I'll apply image. Yeah. And then here, this dialog box will pop up. Okay. Then you went two and 128, and then you change it to subtract blending mode. Correct. Yep. And, and make sure you make sure you check your layer that you want to subtract from, which is your color layer below it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so then, uh, but when you brought it back into the uh, your uh, layer stack, you change the blend mode to linear light. That is correct. When on the texture layer, it has to be linear light. Right. Yep. Because it just that way it brings all the highlights and texture back. If you look, if I take the texture layer off and I click it back on, you can see it just like overlays it back on top of it. Right. And that's pretty slick. I don't know whoever, I don't know who discovered this method, but it's it's pretty cool. And I think Bruce can tell you, we've had teachers teach this in the past. And I was just, I was like, what? <laughs> huh? Yeah. So the the, you know, for me, I think it it is almost always better to start with an action because um at least for new people who don't understand it, because there's really, there's technically a lot of math involved, right? I mean, yeah. that's, you know, whenever you're doing things with layers and blending modes and stuff, there's, there's math happening. Yeah. And um, so, you know, when it's just an action and you're, you're basically saying you're blurring the, you know, the detail in order to create that color layer, you know, and then you're only dealing with the details with the colors removed, basically. Um, you know, I think that's probably, uh, you know, where a lot of people like to start. You know, because it, it is like when you did the apply, um, it's interesting because I thought that there was and, and I've always seen that there's a like a fixed formula for 16 bit images mm -hmm. and for 8 bit images and that apply doesn't change. The thing that changes is the blurring, right? Is the uh, yeah, is, is yeah. I believe so. But I, I tell you, I, I agree with Bruce because there are a ton of frequency separations. Uh, actions that are on the web. And I kind of wanted to show you this so you can, uh, for me, uh, it was helpful for me to go through this exercise of several times before I created an action for myself. Yeah. But I think this exercise is something that if you go through a few times, I mean, I probably went through a dozen images before I said, okay, I, I can now I understand why the, there, there are some actions that go crazy and do other things. And, uh, but this is just a basic, basic frequency separation that I hope that you will get to understand why it does what it does. And it's, it's easy to build. It's not that difficult because sometimes you get these actions and you're thinking, how do they build that? And this is exactly how they would build it. Jay can tell you, you know, if I started with this bottom color and started an action, I just hit the record button and then would do everything I told it to do. And it would, it would do the same thing for you. But this, I think, is a great way for you to understand the basics of how to get started. And then start taking deeper dives, start taking what else can I do with frequency separation? Because there's there's more to it than de just this. But in 20 minutes or less, I made her, I think she's a beautiful woman, don't get me wrong, but just to clean it up was just, it does so much more for your for your images. And for print competition, this is just stellar, so. Yeah, so it's, it's become so fundamental that uh, Affinity built it into Affinity Photo. So frequency separation is, is like, you know, it is a filter that's built into it. Yes. So Danny, while, while I still have you here, scroll up a little bit so we can see her chest, that upper part of her chest next to the pearls. Yeah. So see how like it's blotchy in there? How would yeah. you how would you approach that? With Same the, way, I would go into the yeah. fix me color and then I would just kind of take my blender brush, my my thing. I, I kind of work heavy, so I'll, I'll up it a little bit. But I would come in here and just kind of smooth that out, get those push colors in there that I want to push in um, and just work it. This, this, this may take a while to work because it's kind of a lot of area, but I would push them in. Do you, do you ever, um, on the color layer, do you ever use um, uh, the other method of 
doing like a, a feathered lasso and then using blur, like motion blur to- um... Um, I have not done that yet, Chris. Okay. But there, when I was at, Mar well, not Mars, when I was at Imaging USA, um, Scott Detweiler, he showed us this as well, but he used something else that was pretty cool. And I just, I don't want to confuse you, but he did some of that stuff. He did different blurs and different kind of, um, different kinds of, different kinds of blurs, which I thought were really cool. It wasn't just Gaussian blur, but some other blur as well. No, mo yeah, motion blur can also be used. Yeah, motion blur. When you were talking about dragging colors from, the dragging colors you want into the other areas, um, the motion blur can be really useful for doing that. Yeah, there's a lot of things we can do to that. There's all different kinds of, there's all different ways to skin a cat. So that's the before, can you, can you, and that would be the after. That's not quite golden, but you know, it, it works. Can you oh, show how you do it on a wrinkle real quick or no? I don't have a wrinkle. No, I mean, I can. So let's let's look right here, Laura, where her, her dress is kind of wrinkly. Same thing. You're just going to, you're pushing yeah. the, you're just pushing the wrinkle out. Now keep in mind, wrinkles are dark and dark and light tones. If you push right. the dark and the light together, you're going to get rid of the wrinkle. So there's the before. There's the before. I'm, I'm pointing to my screen like you can see what I'm looking at, showing you. <laughs> Maybe you can just take it out. So see yeah. what I'm looking at? Yeah, I see it. So you can do that as well. Just, okay. So wrinkles are pretty easy. Danny, the other thing I was wondering is where you uh, you were trying to decide how much blur you want. Can you make a layer of smart object? Uh, is that a, can that be a smart filter? So you, you know what, Jess, that's, that's, that's a good question. Probably, I have never done that way, but you probably could make it a smart filter to go back and make that change if you wanted to increase yeah. the blur to 3% or something like that, sure. I think Gaussian blur is a, a smart filter, I'm not sure, I think it is. Bruce, you know? I think Gaussian blur is a smart filter. It yes, Gaussian blur is a smart filter. So, you so yes, you can you object. can change it later. The other thing you could do is just take the whole group and reduce the opacity. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But then, but then when you when you need to move on, you'll have to flatten it, right? So that you know yeah. you're not doing something accidentally. Yeah. I mean, there's so many ways to skin a cat, but this I thought was a cute little basic intro to to frequency separation for those who don't understand it, or maybe maybe it'll help them understand it better. I think it's a great tool. Um, I've really started using it a lot in the last year. So, um, and I also have that, there's a program called Portraiture that I use, but it doesn't quite do the same thing. I mean, I, I like to have the control of the frequency separation. Portraiture does a really good job when it's some basic skin smoothing I need. But I, if I want to just play and, and mold the face, put different masks over top of the face, create different things, I, I and create the shape of the face differently, I could do it through se frequency separation not through portraiture or what's the other one? There's portraiture. Portrait professional. Portrait property yeah, and those kinds of things. Which is, yeah. And that one, I have the same thing. <clears throat> if you're doing something very light and maybe doing like 50 um, headshots that you need to just kind of make them a little bit nicer, yeah. it's great. Um, yeah. But I do find that um, if you try and do even this much smoothing on it, it's artifacty and um, just doesn't look as good as if you did it yourself. I, I don't know, I find something very satisfying about doing frequency separation because I, I don't know, maybe I have more control over it or it's, it's I just have, I just find it satisfying. I, I like it, so. It's fun, yeah. But yeah, that's it, that's it for me, guys. So I hope, they, I hope you learned something. <laughs>